Hey carnivores, SP fam, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day today. You guys can already tell from the title of this video, the thumbnail, what I'm going to be talking about. And yes, I'm going to be inviting on my boyfriend, Steak and Butter Guy, to talk about this topic, this update. But before I do so, I wanted to first share that I have announced the winners to my 40K giveaway, and I wanna make sure that the winners see that they won. So I will put it down in the description box if you want please do reach out to me on instagram or email me i want to take this moment to also let you guys know you can still snatch a free element variety pack and this is what it looks like you will get a bunch of their different flavors this one has lemon habanero mango chili and chocolate salt and if you end up liking it you can also feel free to check out their full size boxes and this is what it looks like I've gotten a lot of messages saying how helpful having a free variety pack is for them to make sure that they actually like it and they like the taste and it works out for them before they commit to buying a full-size box. So if you want to claim that free sample pack, the link is down below and I'm also going to put it here on the screen. Steak and Butter Guy also has learned from his carnivore experience. Electrolytes help him a lot with energy, with his performance in the gym, with his workouts. So that's why I keep ordering more and more of the element boxes. All you guys have to do is take a packet. You can bring it on the go, put it in your bag uh, to work, to school, open it up, pour it in a glass or a cup, put in some water, you can do hot water, you can do coffee, you can do cold water. Steak and Butter Guy likes cold water. I mix it up, he drinks it, and that's it. They also have unflavored, unsweetened electrolytes as well. All right, let me go call Steak and Butter Guy and let's get the video started. Mm -hmm. Hey carnivores, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you guys can see in the title, this is a very long awaited video because you all are wondering how my boyfriend is doing. If you remember my video that I filmed with him, I think three months ago, we talked about your 30 day experience on carnivore. After that video, he stayed carnivore for another two months successfully. But during that entire experience of being carnivore, Steak and Butter Guy learned a lot of things about himself, about his preferences. He came to a conclusion of what is the best way of eating for him, his lifestyle, and his body. So here's how the downward spiral kind of began. I was on carnivore diet for about three months, maybe uh, give or take a few days, and I just started having a lot of cheat meals. Um, started off maybe one cheat meal a week, maybe I'd grab a pint of ice cream mm -hmm. and eat the whole thing in one sitting, feel terrible the next day, uh, get right back on the horse. Um, but then I was having cheat meals like every other day. One of the first things I noticed on the carnivore diet that persisted throughout the three months and eventually got the better of me it's just lower energy. Now, I didn't experience the dips and surges of energy that I would on the SAD diet. Uh, that being said, I would kind of have a cloud of fatigue lasting throughout the day, um, which made me realize that the carnivore diet didn't really fit my body type and my body goals physically. I have a small stomach. I can't just sit down and feast and stuff myself with meat. Um, so that made it incredibly difficult for me to actually feel good physically throughout the day. I would really just feel either stuffed to the brim or that I was dreading having to eat another bite of food. Yeah. This is one of the biggest reasons where I myself started realizing, okay, maybe carnivore is not the perfect way of eating and living for my boyfriend. And from my observations as his girlfriend who lives with him every day, cooks for him, watches him eat, eats next to him, you know, for those three months, the first month I was like, okay, he's just adapting. His stomach capacity will increase. He's gonna get there. I'm gonna keep cheering him on. I'm proud of him already. But then second month, third month, he was still struggling with feasting. He was still struggling with putting down more meat. And um, I realized for his schedule and his lifestyle, he just could not fit in multiple meals into his day, which was pretty much the only solution to his small stomach size. And also, he's not a big eater like me. When he sits down to eat, he enjoys every bite. He takes time with the chewing. He likes to take breaks. He 
likes to sip on some drinks, right? But for <laughs> me, the moment I sit down, it is my life mission to finish that meal and to not stop in between, no talking. That's just how I love to eat. This is not even something I needed to train for. So in the beginning, I could not understand. But then I realized everyone is different at the end of the day. For the goals that he wanted for his body, grazing and carnivore uh, could not work and was not sustainable. And again, the only other solution was eat multiple meals maybe, right? He was working with Coach Raymond. Raymond kept telling him two mad, three mad to make sure to get in enough uh, protein, fat to help him in the gym. And he couldn't because his schedule is busy. He teaches, he works. You said that after eating meals, you'll get sleepy and fatigued, right? Yeah. That's another downside of adapting to carnivore that lasted a while. And that's not convenient for some people as well. So with all of these factors, I completely understand and support his decision to not be strict carnivore anymore. Yeah, and just touching up on physical performance on the carnivore diet, of course, we've already discussed that i felt fatigue uh, i would feel lightheaded at times when performing uh, slightly heavier um, mm -hmm. lifts there are lots of people out there who are very successful building a lot of healthy mass on the carnivore diet and kudos to those people but for me personally i found that really difficult discouraging too at times so maybe share your specific goals that you had yeah i just wanted to put on uh, a lot of lean mass or just mass in general yeah. honestly uh, whether it be lean or uh, fat. He just um, wanted to gain weight. I just wanted to gain weight, yeah. yeah. And that was tough. No matter how much I ate or how little I ate on the carnivore diet, I never really felt like I was getting closer to my own goals of physical composition. You also had a goal of getting a six pack, which you did achieve. I did, I did. Yes. That was nice, that was nice, yes. So how's that yes. going today? It's uh, it's not it's definitely still there. It's not going too good, in my opinion. <laughs> Another huge reason why carnivore diet really, really didn't work for me is I tend to lead a rather extroverted social lifestyle. Yeah. And it's not that it's not possible. For three months, I was able to compromise and tend to both my dietary commitments and the social scene. That being said, it was too difficult for it to be worth it for me. Um, I prefer to just be able to enjoy the moment with the same people eating the same food or doing yeah. the same thing, talking about the same things, and always having that cloud over my head just made me honestly kind of stressed. You must have, you must have felt self-conscious with your bros, you know? So I'm sure when you go out with them, socialize, catch up after so long, you, the last thing you want to do is share that you're carnivore, you know? No, so here's the weird thing is that I don't know how it works with carnivore in um, the gender landscape, but as far as me hanging out with my guy friends, they actually tend to respect the fact that I'm restricting myself. Yeah, you know, because it's, it's tough that like, you know, you hold yourself to high standards and um, restrict certain things that are unhealthy. Yeah. Um, so I actually got quite a bit of social cred for um, being on the carnivore diet, which is really surprising. So maybe some of you have never thought about that, but uh, this brings me to the conclusion that most of the pressure is in your own head. Mm -hmm. And for me, despite the fact that my girlfriend's carnivore, I had a carnivore coach and my friends thought it was cool that I was on the carnivore diet, a lot of the pressure was just coming from within along with a lot of the practical deficits, which is only being able to eat meat and having to eat a certain amount of meat. All of that was just kind of overwhelming as a burden uh, to me. The, the pressure in my own head um, of having to eat with other people, trying to enjoy the meal at the same table, mm -hmm. but having to eat such different things. Uh, for me, the, uh, the, the pros and cons just didn't really add up. I really wish I had attended more of the challenge meetings that my girlfriend hosted because that probably would have made a really big difference for me. But just like anyone else, I'm human. I can be lazy. And honestly, I underestimated the importance of having a community. I thought I was doing enough, but I underestimated how important it is to also have fun. Mm. 
uh, while you're on the carnivore diet and also make friends while you're on the carnivore diet. Not just do the work, but also to enjoy it. So ultimately, you're hearing a tale of a burnout. Yeah. Um, I was doing too much work. Everything felt like work with the carnivore diet, the eating, the lifestyle changes. I didn't really have fun. And those challenge meetings every day, hearing people laugh and cry and share and support and advise, that was something that would have made a really big difference for me if I had allocated enough focus um, to also having fun while I undergo this experiment. So I really overlooked that and, you know, in hindsight, it would have been really nice um, if I had <laughs> decided to join a community and join a challenge meeting for once. I feel that uh, maybe I'd be giving you a different video today. A lot of people go into carnivore expecting results and their goals met because everyone else is feeling amazing, right? Everyone else is shedding pounds or getting bigger, increasing mass. I do think having these community meetings in the back of your pocket to attend any time does help a lot, at least from what I've seen from the members who do attend, who share, who talk. You guys get to also get answers and work with coaches in there. I work very hard to have a whole team of coaches that I support, that I think are brilliant in all of those meetings, helping you guys. But it's not just coaching. It's also us sharing, being friends, talking about topics that we feel like talking about. So if you do want in on these challenge meetings, the group is open and you guys can join. And babe, like you can join anytime too. I understand that me being your girlfriend may be working against this whole carnivore possibility for you. Just the fact that I'm your girlfriend and I'm like this hardcore carnivore, so you probably just wanna be something else because it's just all the time, right? I get it. He literally hears me talk about meat, carnivore, carnivore lifestyle, beef only, fasting, all day, every day. So I get that need to just not be carnivore. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but I feel it. I do feel it. You know, that's actually a really good point um, that she brought up because I feel like even just going into carnivore diet, I kind of had too much pressure. Um, yeah. You know, I when your significant other is really, really, really into something, uh, whether it be diet or a hobby or a passion or a career, you almost feel obligated to try to assimilate yourself into that lifestyle, into those beliefs yeah. um, as best you can. So I feel like I went into it with kind of a, um, a very particular uh, perspective. And, you know, just to touch up really quickly on how much a diet can affect a relationship. If two people have contrasting views on something and they both care deeply about each other, but also about their uh, lifestyle and their own beliefs when it comes to anything, let's just talk about diet, keep things in context. Um, there can be passionate disagreements um, on things. Mm -hmm. And just like any other relationship, you have to find ways of compromising. So. My compromise was an earnest attempt at the carnivore diet. Um, so I, I, I went into it with quite a bit of pressure. And that being said, I do feel that I have made an earnest attempt at trying to see if this lifestyle would benefit me, which is ultimately, this is the most important reason why I decided to quit the carnivore diet for the time being. Because I'm not aware of that. <laughs> I do feel that I've given it an earnest attempt. And that's really difficult for most people, right? Like how many of you have actually really tried the carnivore diet, right? M most people out there, I guarantee are not too different from myself. You know, you try it for like three, four days. You're like, oh, yep, doesn't work. Doesn't work for me. Uh, conventional science is correct, yada, 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 right? Mm -hmm. I feel that I've been trying this long enough without bias, without expectation to actually come to a rational conclusion as to whether or not this diet fits my life right now with my circumstances and my environment. Yeah. And, and I just want to say, as with anything, whether it be carnivore diet or anything else, no matter how unconventional it may seem, if there are a collective of people providing tangible evidence as to why something can actually be beneficial for you, it's worth a try. Don't just shut it down. And if it doesn't work out, at least you gave it a shot. And the only way to really give it a shot 
and become successful at anything that you want to try is if you set up your environment properly. Surround yourself with people who you can not only see as coaches, but also as mentors and, and friends. People who give you a sense of belonging while doing something that can be isolating. For all these reasons, I've decided that right now, carnivore diet doesn't really work too well for me, but if I ever do try it again, I'm gonna try it differently. So I'm going to set myself up differently, try to give myself enough of resources so that I never feel that what I'm doing is either overwhelming or abnormal. I honestly feel like you have like this iron, strong body that can take a lot of carbs. You know? Maybe. And that's another great reason to not have to stick to strict, strict carnivore is that you don't feel like crap the next day when you have some carbs here and there. Whereas like if I had that, my eczema would be back, X, Y, and Z would be back. So I'm doing carnivore because I have to, but I also happen to love it, mm -hmm. right? But you get to do carnivore on the days you feel like it. But on the days where you just want to kick back, relax, and enjoy, I mean, you have the luxury to do so, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you're in a position where carnivore would really benefit your life from a medical perspective, that's very different than someone who's only doing it to get a six pack, right? Like the perspective is entirely different. So just account for those things. And don't fall in the carb hole, like and, junk food hole, because <laughs> that was hard to get out of. And don't fall in the junk food hole. Yeah. Yes, because that, that, that will be your demise. <laughs> One tip that you can share to get out of it if someone is there right now. You need to have a means of keeping yourself accountable. Right, so whether that be a carnivore spouse or a carnivore coach or a carnivore community, have people that keep you accountable. Um, we all need this in all things in our life. Um, there are people who are self-motivated through everything mm -hmm. and kudos to those people, but most of us are not that way. And if you really want to stay committed to something, you need someone or something to, in a way, almost force you, right? There are are times where being forced to do something is not a bad thing. When I was starting to fall off the wagon, what really helped me get back on that horse is just, you know, having this young woman here and um, just not letting me eat those things. Right. You know? Actually, and in the beginning, I let you eat those things. Remember? I wanted you to hopefully feel like crap. I think you did feel pretty bad with yeah, I did. truly junk, junk foods. Yeah, I right? did. I yeah. did. I did. It's true. So he let, I let him feel those feelings. He would uh, express to me how crappy he felt. And I did my job. I just cooked a bunch of meats that he liked and he went back on track. All right. So here are some of my uh, favorite kind of our foods. Of course, you have the staple butcher box ribeye. Although for me personally, I find that I get meat aversion much easier on just steaks, conventional cuts of steak. Mm. So I tend to prefer some other cuts of meat actually. So uh, sausages are always a great alternative. There are many different flavors of sausage. This is a uh, cheddar uh, jalapeno mix. Nice, so yummy. So if you're super hardcore, you could always just go for the a bratwurst. Make sure it's sugar-free, guys. That's important. Okay, go right. on. Um, and I also have eggs. Uh, I love eggs. I like hard boiling them, um, soft boiling them, I should say. His favorite is boiled eggs. Ribeyes, I just like to sear. Um, sausages, he loves them air fried. Oh, show them our new air fryer that we're testing out. So, you know, yesterday she was cooking a steak, and this is no joke. I really couldn't believe that the steak was prepared in the air fryer um, yep. just because I couldn't smell anything. If you're very stingy about not having uh, your home smell like meat all day, then this is a really great alternative. It is so easy to use. All you have to do, turn it on, set the temperature you want. These things don't really matter. You can set the temperature yourself and you can even do a timer as well. You know, 18 minutes, seven minutes, and you just press play and it just starts cooking all of the meats that you want to cook in this awesome air fryer box. My Cuisinart, beloved Cuisinart is back in Los Angeles. So I think I found my new alternative. I will link this Tautronics air fryer down below. Okay, go on. By the um, way, what do you have in your hand? I'd love to know. It's a uh, uh, cow blood. Cow so, blood? Still carnivore. <laughs> Anyways, so I've gone over sausage and eggs. Yeah. Um, you'll see that uh, the key theme here is just variety. So with sausage, you get a variety of flavors. With eggs, you get a variety of preparations. I find that variety really makes carnivore diet 
a lot easier when yes. I was on it. Yes. And um, so here you have short ribs. Our this favorite. is going to be dinner tonight. Um, what I really like about this particular cut is that you get the texture and the flavor from the red meat, but you also get the sinewy, um, kind of chewy bits that bind the bones. And you um, get to eat with your hands. Always fun. Yeah, it just makes it less boring. Okay, finally we have this new addition, um, which is the Carnival Club box. And every month it's different. This month, unfortunately, it's half empty <laughs> since uh, I've eaten most of it. Yeah. But just get a whole bunch of uh, really delicious sausages um, and salami sticks cured meats he ate the prosciutto there was prosciutto 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 dance i mean prosciutto san daniela whoa you have such a good accent thank you so every month is they feature a new artisan so this month it's a spanish brand if you guys want to check out carnivore club i also have a discount code for you guys i will make sure to put it on the screen i can't remember so yeah i'll also link down carnivore club in the description box but these are all of steak and butter guys favorite things that he discovered when he was carnivore the most favorite thing ever is are you ready dun, dun, dun. <laughs> i can't guys this is my favorite carnivore meal they are inseparable look at him what is going on i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you are in need of a community uh that sense of belonging that excellent way of staying accountable through the holidays uh, you guys can sign up for down below in the description box uh, hang out with me, all of the members in there, and my team of excellent, brilliant coaches. So with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Why are you whispering? I don't know. Okay, subscribe. Bye. SBG's out.